I'm Brian Van Vliet. And I'm Kevin Seitz, and we're with Redline Real Estate. We're excited to be joined by Federal Conservative MP Tom Kimmich. Welcome to our video series on the new mortgage rules in Canada. Thanks for coming in today, Tom. Appreciate uh, you being here and giving your, your advice and, and uh, work ethic in Ottawa. We, uh, we're here today to talk about the stress test, the B20 uh, change that happened. Uh, going to a very simple um, explanation of this is that uh, for most mortgages in Canada now, whether they're uh, high ratio or conventional, uh, we as mortgage brokers have to put them through a stress test. And what that means is basically we take the benchmark rate uh, that we're given and add 2% to it in terms of qualifying people for that. It's created a lot of challenges within our industry. Uh, I believe it's hurt a lot of people, buyers, uh, builders out there in the marketplace. I've been on this problem for 18 months now when I heard that you know there might be a stress test coming in as part of the B20 review that the regulator, so the way it works is OSFI is this regulator of the big banks and they introduced this rule. And so at the start of it all, I thought maybe before they consider doing this, they should probably have the finance committee look at it. That's the committee of the House of Commons that I sit on. I'm a member, a full-time member of the finance committee. Uh, I'm a conservative member, so there's only three of us on it. It's dominated by uh, the liberals. And I've been asking them for over a year now to review this stress test, uh, to have the Bank of Canada come in, to have the regulator come in, explain to us what any modeling that they did, the explanation of you know, what's the wisdom, what's the purpose, why are they doing this? And it's been over a year now, we have a full year of data to explain it to us. Um, I've already moved two motions at committee, so I, I've tried to get them to do it. Every single time the Liberals voted it down, this was back in June of last year. And since then, I've been on this, this I call it a roadshow almost. I have a website dedicated to the stress test. I've been gathering stories, talking to brokers, realtors all across the country. I've written opinion editorials on it for major newspapers. I actually wrote just another one for one of Canada's major newspapers. And I have another motion before the committee right now. Specifically focused on the impact of first time home buyers. Millennials, Gen Z, iGen, there's a ton of evidence out there that one just one year the stress test has had a massive impact on the market, a massive impact on first time home buyers. Yeah, and I've actually seen that as well firsthand, uh, taking somebody, a family, and, and a lot of times they're they're fully you know qualified to own this home. Great job, great income, uh, their credit's good. And when we look at this 450,000 single family home that they're looking at, uh, once I put them through the stress test, I now have to drop them down to 370,000. So they look at me and go, okay, Ryan, it's not what we're looking for, but uh, I guess if that's what we have, then that's what we have to work with. So then they start looking in the townhomes and the condos. And as soon as they are pushed down into that bracket, I now have to add condo fees to their liabilities, mm -hmm. right? So now I'm pushing them down more, right? And now we're going into the three and a quarter range uh, in terms of purchase price. And it's just not what they're looking for. Uh, so I've seen the effect of it. Uh, firsthand. And I often have to wonder uh, what was wrong with the stress tests we had before, which was Equifax and right. debt to income ratios that has worked very well for many, many years. Those stress tests uh, have been in place for a long time and I, they, I thought they were worth it. So when I moved my two original motions at the committee, you know, I brought that up. I said, you know, you really were worried about the amount of debt that people were taking on, especially with mortgages, then just adjust the GDR, the gross uh, debt ratio, just, just adjust it up just a little bit, a couple of points, and you would get to that goal that you're trying to reach. And the Liberals at the time, the first time I actually moved the motion, nobody spoke a single word. I had maybe a 20, 25 minute presentation and not a single Liberal spoke and then they voted it down. So the second time I brought it up, I said, I'm not going to let this go. I'm going to keep pushing on it. And they, they spoke up a little bit saying we needed more data. This was back in June. And then they voted it down. So I said, I'm going to be back in January of 2019, I'm gonna come back with another motion and I tabled actually my motion in the fall. So I've, I've told them I'm gonna be back and I'm not gonna let this go. So actually what I'm doing now with the finance committee is I'm not gonna let the committee's business continue until they agree on studying the mortgage stress test.
oftentimes the government gets to decide the business or the liberals on the committee get to decide what we look at. And, and that's, you know, that's part of parliament. That's normal. Uh, they have a mandate that they need to deliver on. But they can't just say no to everything that the opposition is asking. And I have the NDP on 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 site as well. And actually, I have an independent MP, a former liberal MP, who asked a question to the minister uh, just a few weeks ago on the stress test and the impact it was having on people. And he had just a very um, simple response. I didn't answer anything. He just kind of sloughed it off. He didn't care. The regulator has said the reason they've introduced the stress test is to ensure the stability of the banks. While Minister Morneau has said publicly that his reason for doing and introducing the stress test and supporting it was to reduce prices in the two major metropolitan areas in Canada, which was Toronto and Vancouver. Right. And you can now argue the point whether they've achieved that goal, the original goal they had. It's had a huge impact on all the other real estate markets all across Canada. And it's had an impact in communities everywhere outside the GTA and the Vancouver uh, greater area. So uh, all I'm asking them to do is just take a look at it one more time before the next election to have the data, we have it, and to take a look at us parliamentarians and invite all these people in. Because like you, I have a lot of anecdotal stories of the impact it's had on people. And then, you know, the Equifaxes of the world, TransUnion and others, uh, the credit agencies have a lot of information already telling us that mortgage origination has shifted drastically. The people that do have, uh, you know, the homes and, and they're they're coming up for renewal, they're not even wanting to switch or look around or anything like that. So they'll sign the paper and send it back. Uh, and what that does is basically they, they're, they're stuck with that rate the bank mm -hmm. is offering them and they're not shopping around and, and looking for something better for you. Um, the other side of it is that people that need that equity, they've gotten into some trouble and, uh, you know, they, they want to access that equity now have to go to private lenders and how we're, we're pushing uh, you know, people into this area, it's costing them 16% uh, interest, it's costing them fees. And, uh, you know, if we can go back to, you know, not having those stress tests on the conventional side, people wouldn't have to do that. So yeah. it's, a, it's a huge point for people. Yeah, like I, I always I have a couple of examples in my writing that I use. So I have a, a young man, he has him and his fiance were going to buy a property because they're getting married in April. She's a registered dental assistant. He works for his family's business and he runs his own startup that, you know, grosses uh, about 10,000 revenue a month. Like the perfect type of people to move into their first home and to purchase. They failed the stress test. Uh, he's a really good negotiator. So he got the bank down to, I think it was 2.94%. But even if you're a good negotiator, it's the higher of the two. So the way the stress test works, they don't care how good a negotiator you are. So you wind up being stress tested on the higher rate anyways. And so for in his case, it was like over 5%, even though he had negotiated all the way down. And it's an extra 2% on top of that. And just in that type of story, it's just unrealistic. Like it makes the market behave in a really weird way. And it's having a, an odd impact, especially for first time home buyers. They have good jobs. They're gonna be paying their mortgage. The mortgage is typically the last thing that people welch on that they don't decide not to pay. Yeah. And if you look at bankruptcy rates across Canada, if you look at rates of people not paying their mortgages, delinquency rates, they're if not at record lows, they're at near record lows for the last 10, 20 years. This has not ensured the stability of you know single family homes you know the, the the detached single family home that a lot of people kind of look at and aspire to move into i i have data that shows i say in the market in the greater toronto area for instance uh single family homes year to year actually going down in price now which you might say well, that's a good thing that you know governments achieve this purpose but townhouses row houses condos are going way up i'm talking about double digit increases because exactly to your example uh people have lost purchasing power I just uh, had an experience with some clients that uh, were new to Canada and, uh, you know, they're, they're at a certain price point and you know what, they're both here for about a year. They've got good jobs. Uh, their credit's great. All they wanted was a garage. They just wanted a garage. They weren't used to this weather and they just wanted a garage. Well, that garage was going to be an extra, you know, $15,000. I couldn't qualify them for that. That little thing that was so important for them. 
Um, so that it's interesting hearing your stories about uh, what's going on yeah. out east as well. We're probably the only country in the world where uh, people actively look forward to having a garage that, you know, you yes. can actually walk from your house yeah. directly into your garage, sort of going outside to start your vehicle before you have to leave for work. I mean, I have examples of a widow in my writing who, you know, her husband had passed away. And so she decided before the stress test was even talked about to do rentals to the home to prepare it for a sale. And that's a pretty reasonable thing to do, sure, to maximize the value of her home. So she was doing it on a HELOC and she had a mortgage, did the rental, beautiful renovations to the home. Stress test is introduced. So she goes to refinance her home and consolidate all of it, you know, to reduce her interest payments. Can't do it. She failed the stress test. Well, of course she would. She's not working. Right. This was all temporary till that point. So now I have a widow in my writing who is paying a higher interest rate than she needs to. So she's giving yeah. more money and in interest to the bank than she needs to um, for nothing. She, it's not as if we've improved her security, her individual you know, uh, state of affairs, her finances are not improved by this decision. She's paying more money than she needs to to her lender, money that she could be using to pay for her cost of living every single day. If you fail your stress test right now with the current lender that you have, you can't go to another lender. The stress test forces you to stay with the lender you have. So if you're a big lender, what incentive do you have to give them a better rate? You actually have none because you know they can't go anywhere else. And uh, mortgage professionals Canada, I think I estimate about 50,000 people in Canada are stuck in that boat. That's a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. And then you bring up a good point as well as I've seen a lot of uh, seniors, downsizers, wanting to sell their house, move into something smaller, and they can't qualify for it. I've seen that happen several times, and it's it's really sad that we can't facilitate that a little bit better for them. Yeah, and you know, on the on the market side, when I look at it, what it does is it keeps people in houses or homes that they shouldn't be in because they don't want to be in them. But what what then happens is people who want to move into those homes can't. So again, then you're that competition for row houses, for you know the lower priced market, the condos is a lot tougher because you have people there who are moving up into their first home that they're trying to purchase. And the first house I bought was a condo. Yeah. It was it was affordable. It was right next to my workplace. I lived in Edmonton back then. Mm-hmm. It was easy to get and you know, to get to, to and from work. I had two blocks to walk and it was great. It was perfect, but that was the first one. I could have never afforded a single family home back then. So I, we made a decision with my wife and we were just having a baby. We we're gonna move into a condo and we made it work for us. But I hear from a lot of people saying, you know that the purchasing power is down. They got to pay condo fees. Then they got to get CMHC insurance because you know they can't get twenty uh, percent down. And there's all these other problems that compound the issues, especially for first-time home buyers. Uh, they're just uh, getting by and they're not getting ahead. And all of the the stress tests and they introduce other things like carbon taxes and everything else. It's just it's making it harder and harder to earn a living and to really get ahead in life. And especially for the younger generation. So I'm a millennial, but there's an entire generation behind me who are looking at purchasing their first home and they're having a heck of a time. Like the, my, my old staff, I, I use them as sounding boards sometimes. And I ask them like, do you have a down payment for a house? And they're like, no, that's not that possible to do nowadays, especially with the stress that has made it so much harder yeah. to achieve that, that um, you know, the goal or dream of home ownership. You know, when I think about the people that are being forced into rental properties here in Calgary, even we're seeing uh, vacancy rates going down and uh, rental um, rental rates are going up and how that's good for our, our, our young generation. I'm not quite sure. Um, mm-hmm. But we're, we're seeing it happen right now, uh, right here in Calgary. And with CMHC, uh, their delinquency rate is about 0.3 percent right now, which is extremely, extremely low, considering uh, there's probably about six trillion in mortgages in Calgary alone. Uh, so again, you know, we appreciate what you're doing in, in Ottawa, um, fighting for this cause, and hopefully we'll see some some change come out of it soon. Thanks very much, Ryan. Yeah, I, I'm not going to let this go if I have to keep uh, talking at committee until I convince them or until they're tired of hearing my voice for hours on end. Um, I, I plan to get them to at least agree to a couple of meetings where we could call in witnesses, call in the experts, have the hearing, and then, you know, if, if they're willing, maybe give some advice to the government on what it should be doing and how they could change the stress test so it doesn't, it ha- doesn't have such a massive impact on people yeah. that they never really intended to hit in. From a broker standpoint, uh, you know, what we're doing to 
combat this stress test, uh, we've got a few uh, key things that we have been looking at to try and help people in this situation. <clears throat> One is we do have uh, two to three lenders that, uh, that will accept child tax benefit. Uh, so the big banks won't accept it. Uh, but like I said, we've got a few. So we've got, let's say, four or $500 a child now that we can add back into somebody's income that will help them just push back up into the, the area that they wanted to purchase. Uh, we're also looking at doing debt consolidation or refinancing of uh, vehicle loans, which is really, really help people for, for approvals. That's a great idea. Like on our side, what initially started just me all by myself kind of campaigning to have the stress test reviewed. Uh, you have City Council in Calgary, which passed a motion saying the B20 stress test needs to be removed. Uh, the mayor has already written a letter to the premier and to the prime minister saying, you got to look at this thing and you got to change it because it's had an impact on people. So I started all by myself at the beginning and now there's kind of, there's more and more and more people talking about making a change. There's a lot of opportunity out there. People just gotta, gotta take the steps necessary. Don't accept what the charter banks are telling you about the stress test, that you don't pass it. Go and shop around. Ask your broker to shop around with yeah. you. That's really the way to get the best deal out there. Um, you know, the stress test might be some uh, perceived to be some doom and gloom, but there's always opportunity out there. There are equity lenders who do exist and they will, if you look at the finer details in those contracts, it can work for some, may not work for others, but there's now kind of a movement that's developed um, the Ontario Real Estate Association has come out really hard against the stress test and Tim Hudak, who's the CEO of it, is a um, former leader of the Progressive Conservative Party in Ontario. He's been a big advocate as well on taking a review of the stress test. So there's more and more voices being added to it, and mm -hmm. I'm very confident that eventually the pressure will get to them. We'll have some good news. Yeah, and you know, you make a great point. Talk to a mortgage broker. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we have 30 different lenders, right? It's not like it was 10 years ago when uh, somebody came in and you know we could just place them no problem right now we have to take a look at that file and go which is going to be the right spot for this client and uh and yes the credit unions uh, you know they can um, adjust their their rules um, quicker than the banks can so there are opportunities out there for people uh, again the child tax benefit adding that into your income consolidating debt different things like that that we can help people get into the home that they want Yeah, so what, what I always tell people is uh, when they're trying to get a mortgage through a chartered bank, you know, they're dealing with the realtor. The realtor is probably the one that's found the home, the, their dream home, hopefully. And they're trying to negotiate that deal is don't just stop at the chartered bank. Tell your realtor, go to a broker because brokers have lots of different lines they can go to. They know more of the people in the market as well. And you have more options. The more options you have, the better you will do as a consumer. And I, that's why I always, I always press people, don't just stop. Uh, at the big banks, at the chartered banks, go and look at all of your options out there, whether it be credit unions and whether it be, um, you know, what I call B lenders are called B lenders because they're unregulated. Uh, that doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that they offer different services and they look at contracts in a different way. So you have options, just go to a broker because they'll have uh, more options to give you. And as a consumer, that's your right. Your right is to shop around and you shouldn't let the stress test, you know, box you in into only having one choice. Absolutely. Uh, we, we take a look at all the different lenders out there. We've got clients on the on the A side, on the B side. What we look at as well is, is we want to set somebody up for success, not only now, but at renewal, right? In five years from now, if we still have these rules in place, what are your options going to be for, for renewing that mortgage? Well, what the banks do is they'll send you a, a letter in the mail and say, here's your rate. And it's usually based off their posted rates, not the best rates. Uh, so there are different lenders out there. They're still very strong lenders. Uh, they're monoline lenders. Uh, they will always offer you their lowest rate at renewal. And I think that's so important in this atmosphere uh, with all the different changes is the, the ease of doing business for a client to be able to sign the paper at the best rate and just send it back in. No stress tests. So it's something to consider when, when shopping around for a mortgage as well. Tom, thank you so much for coming in today to Redline to talk to us about this. We learned a lot of great things from you. Thanks very much, Brian, for having me. And just for all of your clients, anybody who's listening, if they want to get in touch with me, www.tomkimmich.ca is my website, tomkimmichmp.ca. And uh, they could just send me an email if they want to follow up with me and ask some more questions about the work I'm doing for them. Wonderful. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks. Appreciate it.